Hello everyone! Recently, a new teaser trailer for the Fallout TV series, which will be available to watch on Amazon Video on the 12th of April, has come out, and I would like to talk about not only the trailer itself, but also the reaction to it, hence why this video is titled Review Slash Rant. We will start with the review, where I will talk about what I liked and just any general thoughts I had on the trailer, and after that I will talk about the opinions and reactions of certain people and why I think they are wrong. But without any further ado, let's get into the review side of the video. I have removed the audio for copyright reasons. Vault 33 looks very, very similar to vaults in Fallout 4 and Fallout 76. Obviously, this is a bit of a clash of aesthetics because this is the West Coast, but I still want to appreciate just how accurate it looks to the games. It is really impressive, even if it's a bit different than what the older game vaults looked like. Which does make sense, because although we know it's on the East Coast, it's obviously inspired by the entire series. I love that the first thing we see outside of the vault is a skull, just showing how dangerous the world actually is. I think this shot of Santa Monica Beach really nails the half-destroyed aesthetic that a lot of the Fallout environments go for, where there's been a lot of damage, but it's not, like, obliterated. Same can be said for this little area here, and I really love how this rad roach looks. It looks really good to the games. Our main character getting scared of tumbleweed is like really accurate to the Fallout New Vegas experience. Gotta love God Todd. In this scene, an unnamed character is telling Lucy, the Vault Dweller's name, that Vault Dwellers are an endangered species and that she should really turn back home because he doesn't believe she'll be able to adapt to the Wasteland's harsh environment. I really like this line because it acknowledges just how rare vault dwellers and unopened vaults should be by this time period in the Fallout universe. For reference, the show takes place nine years after Fallout 4. However, based on the fact that the Overseer is her dad and he is probably a good character, this could be one of the vaults which is simply for human preservation and it has no experiment, which could explain why people have been in there for so long, but we'll have to see how that plays out within the show itself. She is immediately shown how harsh the wasteland is, which I think is really cool. Now on to Maximus, because if you didn't know, this show is going to follow three separate protagonists. I really like how the Brotherhood of Steel Vertebirds look in here. Basically everything in this section of the trailer looks super realistic. Like, look at that set of power armor. Like, that looks amazing. Classic dog meat shenanigans. Again, another great shot of the Brotherhood. This action sequence reminds me of some of the more messed up vault experiments, so I'll be interested to see what this looks like within the show. This town looks very similar to Megaton, which some people don't like, but I think it really fits, and it also looks really good in real life. I can already tell that fight scenes with the ghoul are going to look amazing, and I'm interested to see his character, because apparently it's supposed to be a morally grey kind of deal. Not going to lie, this scene seems really random, and I don't know what the context is going to be. See what I mean about the fight scenes? Also, this looks really accurate to, like, Fallout 4 Raider settlements. It's really cool to see a truly mutated character within the TV show, because I feel like that's been pretty rare besides the increase of dwarves in Fallout 1 and 2, and the psychics who have been rare, but throughout the entire series. I'm also interested to see what this means for Vault 32. I mean, if he's mutated, then they must have opened the vault at some point, and they seem to be pretty tolerant because he appears to be the Overseer. So I'm interested to see what that means for Vault 32 and the society that they've built, because that seems really interesting. Please remain calm. This Mr. Handy looks incredible. I'm really excited to see how that looks in the actual show because that's really impressive. This really reminds me of Fallout 3 and your relationship with your father in that game and the emotion on the actor's face is really good so I can tell that's going to be a great scene. More scenes with the Brotherhood and Maximus. You have to wonder who they're fighting in this scene. Love the inclusion of a Yaoguai. If that briefcase has a gek, it would make a lot of sense for what everyone is fighting for and what the central plot of the show will be. And personally, I love the inclusion of geks whenever they're in any of the games, so I'm looking forward to that. This is the first piece of original content and lore that has been added due to the TV show that we know of, and it is horrifying. It's a mutated axolotl with human fingers for teeth, and to me, this screams forced evolutionary virus. It'll be really uh, horrifying to see on screen. And uh, honestly, this could be really cool in 
Fallout 5, whenever that comes out in 10 years. More vault shenanigans, a ship that looks like the Pridwin but isn't. And then we have the final scene of the trailer where we see the bombs dropping and a light flashes on the screen, which uh, that effect is quite good. And this relates to the ghoul character before the ghoulification and of course shows Los Angeles being bombed. Now that I've broke down the trailer and talked about what I specifically liked about it, I'm going to talk more broadly about the trailer, but also all of the information we know about the series so far. First off, the fact that we get three main characters who all have independent stories but will eventually meet up with each other some way through the series is really cool. I like it because it will show us many different sides of the Wasteland. Obviously there's the Brotherhood of Steel stuff, there's the stuff with the ghoul, and of course our vault dweller character, but in interviews with the director they've mentioned that they want to do things with morality and different sides of Wasteland morality. So it'll be interesting to see how each character interacts with that and what their definitions of moral things are going to be, especially when it comes to the Brotherhood of Steel, but also the ghoul, because in interviews it's been said that he's more of a grey character, so he'll be doing good and bad things, or he has some sort of moral code, but he isn't afraid to do things that some others wouldn't. When it comes to other characters I want to know more about, Lucy's father, the Vault 33 Overseer, comes to mind because he seems like he'll be her main story or main priority is finding him. But the thing is, is that Vault Overseers don't exactly have the best reputation. From the advertising and the little that we've seen of him, he seems like a good guy, but we really have no idea and I'd love to see if he is just like that kind of good person, so kind of based off the Fallout 3 dad, but obviously he was an overseer, or there's more to him, because we don't know why he's leaving or what's going on in the shots where they seem separated. And of course, there's the Vault 32 overseer, who I mentioned previously. From the trailer, it looks like he'll only be a side character, but the idea of a overseer who has a mutation and how that affects everyone and what the culture is like there I think there's a lot they could do with that, and I hope that they do. I hope that he has some kind of interesting thing, or Vault 32 is a particularly unique vault, or has a particularly unique culture. The only other character who I think will have some kind of importance, relevance, or uniqueness to them is the person running away from the machine turret with dog meat on a leash. That's all my thoughts on the characters. What I'd like to talk about next is the setting. In a lot of the environments are these very warm yellows mixed with the light blue of the sky or sea, and this is very reminiscent of the old West Coast games as well as New Vegas, which of course makes sense because it is set in the same location. But I just wanted to mention how much it really fits with that vibe in the colour scheme of those games. And then there are a few shots that really remind me of Fallout 3 with those blues and greens, it's really dark and cold, and I'm glad they're using inspiration from multiple games. And we have these very lush, dark green areas with a lot of trees. Like, look at that contrast. That is beautiful. This is not really a common thing within the games, unless there's a Gek or the area was relatively unaffected by the Great War, but visually, it looks stunning, and we have no idea if there will be an explanation or not, so it doesn't really matter right now. There's even snow, which really reminds me of the Fallout New Vegas Snow Lodge, because they have trees and snow there. It's really great environmental pieces. As I mentioned before, this looks exactly like the Fallout 4 Raider settlements, like down to every minute detail, it's uh, really great. Every single aspect of it looks like it came straight from Fallout 4. The final aspect of the trailer, and what that means for the show in general, is basically the costume slash practical effects department. And I have a lot of good things to say about this. Not only in the shape, but in the colour as well, the vault looks not only really similar to the games, but also really good. The same thing is true of the vault suits. They look so much like the later Fallout 4 vault suits. I mentioned it before, but the red roach in both these scenes looks uh, really well done. And of course we have the vertebrates, which look just like they look really accurate and they look believable in my opinion. Really love these shots when they're actually inside. And of course, I have to mention just how good the practical effects are for the power armor. It just looks so good. I will say this hand looks kind of cheap, but it's not too bad. Amazing shot of a more open area in a vault. 
This town just looks really, really nice. Basically, this entire fight scene with the ghoul, I mean, it just looks so realistic to the games. I've already said it like three times. It just looks so good. Look at those computers and that overseer window. Honestly, this turret is a little plasticky, but I still think it holds up pretty well. That Mr. Handy is fantastic. And I like these somewhat believable explosions, and that Yao Guai does not look bad at all. Same with the Axolotl, it looks quite realistic for being CGI. This ship by the name of the Caswin is quite impressive, and of course, final scene of the trailer is the nukes dropping. And personally, I think this looks pretty good, except I feel like the bomb and the explosions could have been a bit bigger, but I think it's mostly accurate to how it's depicted in Fallout 4. I've put a link in the description to the original trailer for if whatever reason you're watching this but haven't watched the trailer, or you want to re-watch the trailer now that you've heard my thoughts on it, and of course that version will have sound. Now that my review and general thoughts and opinions of the trailer and other information we know about the show is over, I want to rant about some of the opinions I've seen about the show based on the trailer, and I want to kind of debunk them or give evidence or ideas to otherwise. And as we go through these opinions, they're going to get from relatively tame, but I can debunk them, or show that they're wrong, or at least give my opinion on them, to just terrible, terrible opinions, where they don't really deserve a response, but I'm going to do it anyway. The first thing I want to mention is people bringing up the Castlewin, which looks a lot like the Pridwin. And the thing about the Pridwin is that it's supposed to be somewhat unique because it was built using the remains of the Enclave Crawler base at the end of Fallout 3. However, I would like to point out that we have no idea what the West Coast looks like at this point, and the Brotherhood of Steel could have got these kind of resources from any other part of America. Just because it seems unique from the games we've seen doesn't mean that it couldn't be recreated in another place without the Enclave Crawler, just using a lot of different resources. So I would say this is a bit of a non-issue because there'd always be a reasonable explanation on how to make it. Plus, it does look very similar, but it's not the exact same. It has like a really like straight triangle kind of edge when the Pridwin was much more of like a an overly kind of cylinder shape, but you know, it's, it's just a bit pedantic. Another thing I saw commented about the series is that somewhere it was mentioned the Brotherhood of Steel were going to be the good guys, and I genuinely couldn't find that anywhere, but I did find this piece of an interview with the director. It's a little bit of the Marine Corps, it's a little bit of the Knights Templar, it's this weird kind of fusion, Nolan says, which is the director. In the absence of a federal government, you just had all this military hardware lying around. Who would get it, and how would they maintain control of it? The answer is the Brotherhood. The answer is the Brotherhood, which Nolan describes as being fueled by a mutated version of patriotism, religion, loyalty, and fraternity. Now, I don't think this exactly sounds like good, but it does sound pretty accurate to what the Brotherhood of Steel are like in the majority of games besides three. They think they're doing the right thing, but they're often misguided, and it is this sense of loyalty and even like a religious thing to do with these old knights kind of thing, and they're very loyal to each other but xenophobic to everyone else. This sounds exactly like the Brotherhood, even the original Brotherhood, so I don't know what anyone's problem with this is. Another complaint I've been seeing is the amount of greenery in the trailer, and how in the Fallout games, there isn't really much greenery because the trees don't regrow, but I would like to remind people there are areas with green trees, like the Ski Lodge in Fallout New Vegas and the Oasis in Fallout 3. However, the show could just completely ignore the non-growing aspect and make it have a lot of trees, or this could just be an area not really affected by the bombs. But I don't really think this is a massive deal because it's always just been a tiny Fallout quirk, but I don't think it's like essential to its DNA or anything. I'm not really too fast if they change it. Another complaint I keep hearing is, where is the NCR? Where is the NCR? Well, they're not really shown in the trailer, which makes sense because it's a teaser trailer, and none of our three characters are really involved with the NCR, except the ghoul could technically be a fugitive, right? But the thing is, this is a leaked image, but this is clearly an NCR flag, so they're very much going to be in the show, they just haven't showed us yet, which makes sense, so I really wish people would stop freaking out about the lack of NCR. They're very clearly going to be represented in the show. Now, so far, these issues 
haven't been that bad. I can understand people's perspective on this and why they think this, but I think it's clear that with a little bit of thinking about it and showing certain evidence, I think it's pretty clear that these things won't actually be an issue. But these next two, I'm really annoyed by, particularly the last one. That's probably the worst thing I've been seeing. And unfortunately, I've been seeing it the most out of any complaint. One of the more annoying complaints I see is that this is ruining the law, or it's going to ruin the law of the games. And honestly, until we actually know in the show explanations for things, we'll never know if they actually ruin or change anything. So I don't think there's any point getting upset in the trailer. Also, if something hasn't been shown that's in the old games, it doesn't actually mean that it's not there, it just means they haven't shown it in this two minute trailer. Uh, so I really don't think it's something to worry about just yet. They could ruin parts of the law, but we just don't know that they have yet. There's nothing to guarantee that. For all we know, there's an explanation for anything that might be out of place. It's just way, way too early to talk about them ruining the law. And honestly, it's been like a hundred years since the original two games, so they could change whatever they want, really, because it's been so long. Now, if you're like me, and you were excited about the trailer, and you were reading comments on the actual trailer, or other people's breakdowns of the trailer, and you're a normal person, I want to stress that, then you were probably really disappointed by certain comments you saw, and you can probably already guess what I'm about to say, but for those who haven't been reading comments very often, it's about this show being called Woke. The term woke has been so watered down by right-wing politics and right-wing media that at this point it basically means anything that isn't cis, white, straight man who is stoically traditional. However, it used to mean being aware or awake of issues faced by African American people, and then later on basically being socially aware of any social issues going on. So... Can you take a guess at why the right-wing crowd, which unfortunately seems to be a big percentage of the Fallout fan base, uh, I mean, sorry to throw shade at the original fans, but considering that the game came out in the 90s, kind of makes sense it'd be like a bunch of 50, 40-year-old men, wouldn't it? But it is quite a shame, and I'm sure there's a lot of younger men here as well in these comments, but it is quite terrible. But the reason it's been called Woke is for, like, three reasons. But the main one is, oh my god, she's a woman? Oh, my main character can't be a woman? Ah! It's not like, you know, women play these games or whatever, for one, and you can always be a woman in the games, but also it really shouldn't matter to you that much, the gender of the character. Like, that's so ridiculous that they think they're going woke just by having a woman in it. No shit, women exist. I mean, not only is it ridiculous that Apparently being woke is a bad thing, you know, caring about minorities and social issues is a bad thing, but that's besides the point. It's like they don't really know what franchise they like, or they have no media literacy and they think all the bad guys are the good guys, like they unironically think that the Enclave is based and it's not just like a joke, because I like the joke, but they're actual fascists and that was the point of Fallout 2. Don't genocide the muties for no reason, right? It's really plain and simple to see. I mean, the whole Fallout franchise started out as criticism of America and the American government and American culture, and it has continued to be. Like, it has always made fun of patriotism, nationalism, imperialism. It is what you would, like, it's the definition of of a woke series, if you want to use their stupid terminology for woke, right? It's always been socially aware and t talked about social issues. The only reason the Great War happened is because of mass consumerism. The world ran out of resources because they used them so recklessly that they just flat ran out, and they didn't do anything renewable with them. Mix that with militaristic and anti-communist propaganda, the Fallout series is pretty much just a parody of the Cold War, and if it continued on indefinitely. Like, this cannot... how does no one notice this? If you're actually a fan of the series, and you say woke, like, how are you a fan of the series and you also believe that? Do you just not watch any of the scenes or listen to any of the dialogue or care about it at all? Is your media literacy that bad, honestly? And when we talk about the LGBTQ 
community, which the anti-woke crowd always loves to hate, the Fallout series has always been very pro the LGBTQ. Fallout 2 was the first game in all of history to have a lesbian wedding. Fallout New Vegas has Veronica and Arcade Ganon, two prominent characters which are both gay. And in the older games, as well as Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas, you could pick between two different perks, but you could actually pick both, which would insinuate that you were either gay, straight, or bisexual. I literally saw a comment saying that they were going to introduce ghoul rights, and I believe it was either super mutants or synth rights, but I'm sure people have said both. And I'm like, literally, yes, that's what so much of it has also been about. You can be mean to ghouls, but that always gives you evil karma. And so much of it is like, oh, people mistreat them because of how they look, and it's not exactly fair to them. Same thing with synths, just because they're different, they get mistreated. Wow, that doesn't sound like an allegory for something. Totally. So, to say that the TV show is special in being woke, or that Fallout has succumbed to wokeness, is just plainly untrue if you look at the history of Fallout, and also hateful, bigoted, and stupid. And it really pains me that there's such a big part of the community that genuinely feels this way. In conclusion, the Fallout TV show is actually looking quite good. It seems like the people working on it really understand the comedy, the messaging, and the vibes of the Fallout universe. It seems like they've got really good characters and stories going on. The practical effects look amazing. The environments look great. And there are a lot of people with some okay questions which can be easily answered. And also a lot of people with some really terrible terrible takes which we will not be respecting and just in conclusion like the title says the fallout tv show is looking great ignore the hate i hope you enjoyed this video remember to like subscribe and comment what you liked what i can improve on what you thought about the trailer and what you thought about my thoughts on the trailer uh, i'd really appreciate it if you guys subscribed particularly today because uh this is one of the videos that I worked the hardest on, like, ever. Took a lot of editing. I'm pretty proud of it. I uh, just thought I should mention that. And I've been Sweet Tripod. I'll see you in the next video.